The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The light beam from a laser is as close to an ideal beam as one can get. And what I mean by that is that the properties of this beam, the propagation properties, are limited by fundamental laws of physics, for example, laws of diffraction, and not by the properties of the light source. For example, a laser beam from a well-behaved laser can be collimated to a very small angle. This angle is determined by, as I say, the laws of diffraction, which is the wavelength of the light divided by the diameter of the beam. And it doesn't say anything about the size of the source or the properties of the source. And that is the ideal collimation limit on a, on a beam. At the same time, a laser beam can be focused to a very small spot. The size of that spot is again determined by laws of diffraction, which is the wavelength of the light divided by the diameter of the, of the beam multiplied by the focal length of the lens. And if we choose the diameter of the beam and the focal length of the lens about equal, then the spot size would be of the order of the wavelength of light. And again, doesn't say anything about the physical size of the light source or what have you, as we would have uh, in a case of a, an arc lamp or any other kind of uh, light source. Now, in these demonstrations that follow, we're going to illustrate some of these basic properties of, uh, of laser beams. What we're going to start with is this laser here, which is a helium neon laser. And here is the beam from the laser. We're going to reflect it by this mirror here, and then reflect it again by this mirror here, and let the beam fall on the, on the screen. Now, you might be able to get a, a better feeling for the beam if I use the black card. Maybe the colors will come out better. So here is essentially the beam coming out from directly from, uh, from this uh, laser. And it's very difficult, very difficult to, to tell what's going on. It looks pretty, pretty, uh, pretty collimate. Now, what the first thing I'm going to do is, is expand the beam and see, and see what it looks like. So I'm going to take a short focal length lens, and I'm going to place it in the way of the beam. And here on the screen now, we see, we see, the, uh, we see the, uh, the expanded beam. Now if we go take a close up, we can see that uh, it's got rings and what have you. Now these these rings that you see, or these fringes, are due to the fact that the laser beam has to go through optical components, like the output mirror of the laser it has to be reflected by these mirrors, and then has to pass through this lens over here. And, and they all corrupt the, the laser beam. But we can easily get rid of these effects by placing a pinhole. Here is the, uh, here's the, here's the pinhole. And, and what I can do, I can just place the pinhole in front of this lens, or at the focus of this lens here. And uh, if I have my adjustment right, I have then so-called the spatially filtered uh, laser beam. As you can see on the screen now, we got rid of the, all these rings. And this is as close to an ideal laser beam as one, one can get. Now what we see here is, is the, the speckle. So if I move the screen a little bit, you can see I can wash out the speckle. So when it's still, you can see the, the speckle pattern because the surface is not, uh, is not smooth. But otherwise, you don't see any, any fringes uh, on the beam. And also, uh, the, the, there's an intensity distribution which is, which is essentially Gaussian uh, squared. The field is Gaussian, but the intensity distribution is, uh, is Gaussian squared, so that essentially drops off to zero in the, 
in the wings. All right, so this is, this is a so-called spatially filtered laser beam. And for some experiments, it's very important to, to uh, spatially filter the beam, especially in interferometry and, and what have you. Now, I'm going to, uh, well, no, before I do anything else, I'm going to show you that, that the, the placing of the pinhole is, uh, is very critical. If, I, if we can now take a close up of the, of the spot. Now, if I move the pinhole slightly, you can see that, that the, first of all, the beam disappears because this pinhole is only uh, of the order of about 12 microns or so. And another point that one has to watch out for when using such a pinhole as a spatial filter is that if the pinhole interrupts any part of the laser beam, the now let's look at the, the, the inset again, that this, this Gaussian distribution in the beam gets, gets affected and you will start to see all kinds of uh, diffraction rings. So again, for the spatial filter to work, the, the, uh, the, the pinhole must not cut any of the essential part of the, of the laser beam. Now, what I'm going to do is, is collimate uh, this, this beam of light. And here what I will use is a, uh, a simple two-lens uh, two collimator. And uh, I'll place it over here. And uh, and here it is. Here's the, here's the output from the, from the collimator on the black card. You can see that Obviously, you can't check on the exact collimation, but you can see that the beam can be, can be uh, simply uh, uh, collimated. All right. Now, the next thing that one sometimes wants to do, wants to focus the laser beam. Again, if I take a simple lens, and again, place it in the beam, now I can focus Let's look at the beam again. I can focus to a tiny spot and back out again. Here we are. You can focus to a small spot. Now, it's very difficult to see the size of the, of the spot or even the shape of this focused Gaussian, Gaussian beam. Remember I said before that it can be focused to, to a spot size of the order of the wavelength uh, of light. And it's not so easy to see it on this card. So what we're going to do when we come back, we're going to uh, get a water tank and pass the light beam, the focused light beam, laser beam, into the water tank. And we'll add some scatterers to enhance the, uh, uh, the, 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 the scattering from the laser beam by the water. And then you'll see you get a better picture for, for the focusing of, uh, of this Gaussian uh, laser beam. So when we come back, we'll have that all ready for you. We have now placed the water tank in place so that we can pass the laser beam through it and visualize the, the laser beam as it passes through the, through, the, through the water. We've also, here is the tank by the way, and uh, we've also added a few drops of milk to enhance the scattering. And that's why the water looks murky. In addition, we've tilted the tank a little bit so that we can get a better angle for the, for the camera. Now, the setup is just like we had it before, but let me remind you of it. Here's the laser, is the beam from the laser, reflected by this mirror here. Then we pass it through a polarization rotator here so that we can adjust the polarization for uh, maximum uh, scattered light for the camera. And then the output after the polarization rotator gets reflected by this mirror here into this short focal length lens, the spatial filter we had before, and then the collimator. The output of the collimator is here before it goes into the tank and then out here after it leaves, leaves the tank. Now in order to visualize the beam as it propagates in the water, we'll have to turn the room lights down. But let me tell you what I'm going to do when the room lights are down. I'm going to first look at the 
collimated beam in the water. And then I'm going to take this lens and another lens like this, and I'm going to place it over here so that we can focus the light into, into the tank. All right? so, and then we can explore the region around, around the focus. So now we're ready to turn the room lights down and look at the region around the focus uh, by simply observing the scattered light uh, in the water. Now that the room lights are dimmed and the camera focused into the tank, first thing we see is, is the collimated beam or the scattered light associated with the collimated beam. There's not much I can really say uh, about that. More interesting is when I put a, a lens before the, before the tank and look at the focal region. Here we are. I'm going to adjust the position of the lens so that the waist or the focused region, the focal region, is in the center of your, of your screen. Now, the things that you can observe is that laser beam coming in from, from the left then is then focused to a, uh, a region where the spot is small, spot size is small, and then expands again on the other side. Now, because of the limitation of television recording, and especially recording of color, especially red, you do better if you want to see how narrow that focal region is. You do better if you turn down the color, turn off the color, and look at it in black and white. If you do that, you'll see that, that the, the focal region is now narrower than it is when, when it's red. But in fact, the truth is that you cannot really observe in this way the, the, uh, the true size of the, of the f focused spot, because that's only uh, a few microns, and it's going to be limited by television resolution uh, in, in any case. But at least you get a feel for the fact that the beam is pretty narrow at the, at the focus. Another thing you want to observe is that the region around the, the focus is, is reasonably uh, constant in, in, in diameter. And that's called the Rayleigh region, where the expansion of the beam is not so big. But after that, then the beam expands one side and then symmetrically, symmetrically the, the other side of the beam. The intensity distribution, if I take a slice anywhere along the beam, the intensity distribution is still Gaussian or Gaussian squared. The field distribution is Gaussian, intensity is Gaussian squared. The, the other uh, thing to observe is that the curvature. Now, at the focal, at the focus, or at the, at the, the middle of that Rayleigh range, where we call the focus or the waist of the beam, the curvature is, the radius of curvature is, is, is infinite which means that we have a plane wave. Now, the, it stays plane within the Rayleigh region, or close to plane, and then, then we develop the curvature. So we have an expanding beam on one side, an expanding beam on the other side. And in fact, if we go far away, the curvature, the radius of curvature, is the same as if we had a spherical wave starting at the, at the waist. All right, that's with this lens. Now I'm going to take this lens off and place another lens that is a little shorter in, in, uh, in focal length. And here we are. Oh, I have, let me turn it around. And then let me again center it so that you can, uh, the waist is the middle of your screen. You can see now the divergence is, is different, showing that it's a shorter focal length lens. Now if I'm Move it to one side, you can see that the beam gets quite big very quickly, and also the same to the other side. And then the, the and then the, but the other thing you notice is that the Rayleigh range, or the region around focus now, is smaller. So it's a tighter uh, focus than in the previous case. And as the, as the uh, 
focal length of the lens gets bigger and bigger, then the Rayleigh region gets bigger and bigger also. So here we are with a shorter focal length lens. And again, if you want to see a nice small focal region, then you want to turn down your color and look at it in, uh, in black and white. So in summary, we've illustrated some of the basic properties associated with the optics of laser beams, such as collimation, focusing, and what have you. Also, we've shown that the use of a special filter can help clean up the laser beam. And uh, it looks very beautiful after that. But in order to really measure the properties of, the, of laser beams and measure the exact size of the focus and the exact collimation, degree of collimation, one really needs to use more precise methods, such as taking a tiny pinhole of the order of one or two microns in diameter and then scanning it across the beam at various locations. Otherwise, uh, it's, uh, it's, only, it's only approximate, but I think you'll get a feel for, for these properties in these, uh, of the laser beam in these demonstrations. 